Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I am a wedding planner based in Central Texas and Southern California, and I hated planning my wedding. Yeah, no, that's, that's, not, that's not a gimmick. I did. <laughs> like, I use this term, like, if, if you've heard me repeat things before, then just, like, know that you're a good student of my channel, okay? But if you haven't seen some of my videos, then you may not have known that I made some mistakes that really, really led me to, like, not enjoying wedding planning many times. And now that I've been uh, wedding planning for quite a few years, and then obviously a couple years here on YouTube, I've learned and I've seen some things and I'm now able to really reflect upon why I hated my wedding so hard <laughs> and uh, use that knowledge to help and benefit both my in-person clients and you guys here online. So without further ado, let's just jump into all the juicy details of why it sucked. <laughs> So the first mistake that I made, like, well, or like the first reason that I didn't enjoy planning my wedding was some of my vendors. Um, I booked based off of cost and not off of personality. If I brought my husband in here, he would immediately tell you there's one singular vendor that I regret hiring. Uh, it's something I've never talked about here on this channel because um, I don't want to do any like dragging or anything like that, but I honestly earnestly regret that decision because I booked this vendor based on their price tag and not based on how I felt around them. Not based on how much I felt heard or seen. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm a pretty bold personality, but I kind of just feel like I was being dragged behind a car with this person. Um, and instead of doing my research and really looking around to find someone whose personality worked really well with mine, I just booked someone based off the fact that they had worked with someone else that I had known. Um, and that person seemed to enjoy their experience and then completely ignored all of the red flags for uh, why I should not be working with this vendor. So my first encouragement to you is um, don't always let the price tag be the reason that you book a vendor. And there's the, on the honest truth, like why I always bring up personality and why it's important to have a good personality match with the vendors that you're hiring is because they're going to be working with you on a very emotional event. So whether you're happy, stressed, sad, crying, laughing, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a very emotional event. And you wanna make sure that the vendors that you're picking make you feel heard, make you feel seen, and aren't annoying as heck. So do as I say uh, with this one and not as I did, because that honestly, this particular situation borderline ruined my wedding. Um, and I don't make that statement lightly. And it's the reason why I always bring up personality. So if you guys ever get annoyed by that, just know that it, like, it comes from a good place. I'm saying that because I didn't do that and it, uh, for a long time has colored my perception and my view of how my wedding went. So how do you avoid doing that? Uh, do your research, uh, make sure you chat with uh, potential vendors and make sure that you are feeling heard and seen um, and that the sound of their voice doesn't annoy you. You've checked reviews, you've maybe talked to past clients. Had I done my due diligence in finding all of my vendors instead of just booking them based off of price tag, um, I would have had a different experience and I don't want that experience for you guys. So <laughs> it, was, it was bad. The second thing I did, and I did a whole video on this one, uh, I did too much DIY. I bit off more than I can chew. I threw myself into the aesthetics of my event, which was one of my priorities, and I'm not knocking that. We've, we've got a whole video on priorities over on this channel. It's something, it's a huge tenant, a component of the master plan, the online course that we have. Like, I do think that priorities and recognizing what, you, what yours are is extremely important. And one of mine, one of my top priorities is I wanted a beautiful event. What I didn't do um, was take the time to recognize whether I should be doing this much DIY or not. Um, I come from a background in interior design. I like pretty things. I like pretty spaces. I like things that are aesthetically pleasing. So for me, with my event, I was like, I need to really make this gorgeous. I want this to be one of the prettiest weddings people have ever seen. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We were just balling on a budget and I didn't have tons of funds to um, to go extravagant with things. So I made them all myself. And that's why when I talk about DIYs, I like always hedge things by saying like, do as I say, not as I did. Don't do more than 40% DIY, like lean tr as much as you can. Try to find professional vendors because like I didn't. 
Now, let's be real. There were some fights between me and my then fiance, now husband. We did make it through to the other side. Um, there were nights where I stayed up till two, three o'clock in the morning finishing our backdrop and it ended up gorgeous and I was very pleased with it and I actually still own it to this day. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's just like folded up somewhere, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Um, I did too many things. And so when it came time to my wedding day, I was stressed and trying to figure out where everything was located, where it was all set up to see if it was done correctly because I had made so many things myself. I then had family and friends do the setup for me and it wasn't, it couldn't let go of it. Um, I was emotionally invested. I had done too much leading up to that. And then because I had done so much DIY and put so much effort into those things, I then was very emotionally invested in how they were put together or laid out or set up. Now, I'm not saying you don't need to have those feelings or you don't need to be emotionally attached to those things because you've worked really hard on DIYs. That's completely understandable. But I think it was the sheer amount that I did that was like, probably don't do that. <laughs> So in my professional recommendation and my personal recommendation, having screwed it up myself and then worked with clients for years afterwards, do not DIY more than 40% of your stuff. And that includes hiring friends and or family to fill in the roles of a typical professional vendor. Just honestly, I think it's a good idea to know and to walk away. Um, and that is not something that I did effectively. And if I did it over again, I, I probably would still do a lot of DIY. <laughs> Maybe I'd set up better boundaries or develop a better crew around myself to make sure that it was done more effectively and it wasn't all falling on me. The third reason I hated planning my wedding is I did not know when to walk away from Pinterest. Listen, I love Pinterest. It is like one of the best tools to plan your event because it's like such a great resource with all of these wonderful visuals, which by the way, if you want to follow us on Pinterest, um, I will link that down below. We've got amazing boards full of inspiration or pinspiration, if you will, um, that I know a lot of you enjoy. So I just want to bring that to your attention. We do have a whole Pinterest. We are very active over there. We love pinning pretty things. Come give us a follow uh, and maybe you'll find something pretty too. But, but when it gets close enough to your event, you gotta know when to stop. Like you just gotta know like it's time to walk away. I can't look at stuff anymore. I would say it's probably within the last two months, like you're done. Like you're just, you should walk away. Of course, if you have something else that you haven't quite finished yet and you need to polish that up a little bit um, and you need a little bit more inspiration, that's fine. Like I'm not the Pinterest police here. I'm not gonna like jump on your Pinterest and be like, no, eight weeks out, you're done. But, but the problem is like the comparison. Comparison is like just the thief of joy. Comparison is just such a hard thing. Uh, it was a hard thing for me because I was active on Pinterest in the last few weeks and then I started second guessing so many things that I had already spent so much time making and developing and DIYing that of course I've already shared. I was emotionally attached to their life journey from when they were made to like where they'd end up at my wedding. And then I go on Pinterest like two weeks beforehand and I look at the stuff I made and I go, is that good enough? Is that special enough? Is that pretty enough? But I like this design better. Did I screw up by not making that look like this? Should I try to make this? Should I add this onto what I was doing? And while like DIY stuff necessarily may not be a problem for you, like you may not go, hey, I should make that. You may go, hey, did I screw up by telling my florist that I wanted this color palette when I should have gone for this one because look how pretty it is on Pinterest. So I do think that at a certain point, regardless of whatever your, your vices or convictions are when it comes to the aesthetics of your event, you will need to shut down Pinterest to give yourself space to breathe and really appreciate what you have created up until this point because that is something I didn't necessarily do and I struggled pretty close to my event, like getting up to it, doing that comparison game and, and it was, um, and it really did steal some of the joy that I had in creating those things and in designing them. And then the last thing that like, just was awful. I didn't have a coordinator. And that's honestly, if you've been around here long enough, you've heard me talk about this before, but like that's why I started my business is because I went, I don't want any bride to go through that ever again. Oh my goodness, no ma'am. Like that was not fun. That was brutal. I cried like twice on my wedding day, not because I was overcome with emotion, it's because I was stressed. There was no key point person to run my wedding day. And then couple that with like the little tidbit of that story that I shared, um, couple that with a vendor that was emotionally draining and I regretted hiring, the whole day regretted hiring. The day fell apart for me. And if I had had someone to direct the events, 
Um, we wouldn't have been late. Well, being late's not that big of a deal. Like, weddings run late all the time, and that's okay. A timeline is more of a guideline anyways than an actual rule. But at least I would have had someone to spearhead or move things forward for us. We stood waiting for our grand entrance for like 20 minutes. My husband was starving and kind of, he was hangry, let's be honest. And then I had to like switch up the timeline on the fly, like tell my mom to tell the DJ, the photographer, and like, it just... I didn't have anyone else that I could pass stuff off to. Let's rewind a bit. The morning of my we wedding when I was getting ready, I was getting a bunch of phone calls. Like people were calling me being like, hey, where does this go? Or, um, I think it might be a little bit late. Or, oh, it looks like we're missing a tablecloth. And I had no one that I could send or push that off to. At a certain point, my friend Natalie grabbed my phone. She's like, nope, you're done. And it stepped in on my behalf, which was great. But I didn't have just one person that was like steering the ship. I was still that person. So you may not be able to afford a coordinator. If you can, I'm telling you, like this is one of the reasons that I hated my wedding. Like without a doubt, hands down, had a hard time even thinking about my wedding for weeks, months, without this like sense of sadness and regret because it just was so stressful. Like I bit off more than I could chew. I was the one in charge of everything and I couldn't sit down and just relax and enjoy it because I was coordinating my own event. Now, if you can't afford to hire a coordinator, I totally get it. We've got multiple resources to help people out, regardless of where you're at, whether you're balling on a budget or the sky is the limit when it comes to your wedding funds. Um, of course, as usual, I will link all of our resources down below for you if you want to take a look at them. I'm just happy to help in any way that I can, but at least now you know why. Because like, I don't want anyone to hate their weddings. I don't want you to leave one of the coolest days of your life and be like, that sucked. <laughs> So much of what I do is based on the fact that I didn't like my wedding. There's many elements of it that I loved. Um, I got my husband out of it and he's like literally my favorite person on the planet. But that doesn't mean I liked the day. That doesn't mean I liked elements of the event. And I wish that someone had told me these things beforehand. That's why I started my business. That's why I started this channel because like I wish someone had told me these things. Now we are all different people with all different needs and ideas and like you may not be DIY heavy. You, you may not have the budget for a coordinator, but just know like this is my heart. This is why I do what I do because I want to make sure you guys have bomb wedding days. All right. Like regardless of what life looks like or if it's a big wedding or a small wedding, micro wedding or an, an elopement or destination or close to home, um, it, whether you have $2,000 or 20 I want your day to be special. And that's why I'm gonna be here every single week coming up with more videos for you guys to watch because I want you guys to enjoy every single step of this process. And I promise you, I promise you it is possible. Just just do as I say <laughs> and not as I did. Cause that, ugh. If anyone's already been through their wedding and had an experience like this, like you might understand what I'm saying. I, I, some, I even have a hard time looking at our wedding photos sometimes, still to this day, because I'm like, I remember what happened at that point. I remember what was happening there. I remember my feelings here were like, ugh, you know? So, <laughs> ugh. So as long as I can be supportive and helpful along the way, I'm gonna I'm keep doing that. If you guys enjoyed this, please jump on down there, hit that subscribe button. My neighbor's truck is really loud. Living in Texas is... <laughs> definitely different. <laughs> if you guys haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit the subscribe button. I would love to keep bringing you weekly tips and tricks to help you figure out how to not screw things up like I did, because I don't want anyone being bitter like I was. Am. Yeah, I still am. And until next week, bye guys! <laughs>